So I quit enclomiphene. But I actually just started taking it again. In fact, I took a dose this morning. And no, this is not something like, oh, I was cycling enclomiphene, and then I came off cycle, and I'm doing another cycle. No, no, no. I planned on quitting enclomiphene indefinitely. But I recently had a change of heart. And I'll explain why, what changed my mindset. And you'll learn about enclomiphene and my current enclomiphene protocol. And so it should be a good video. First, what is it? So enclomiphene is a selective estrogen receptor modulator, a CERM. So basically what it does is it binds to the estrogen receptor in the brain. So it blocks the estrogen receptor and your brain thinks, oh shit, I have low estrogen, so I better compensate by releasing more gonadotropin releasing hormone. And that has the downstream effect of increasing testosterone. So that's the desired goal of many people who take enclomiphene. So enclomiphene is very appealing because it boosts your endogenous testosterone production. It does not suppress your endogenous testosterone production. So it's a great alternative to TRT because you don't have to worry about the regret of shutting down your natural testosterone production. There's basically no commitment. And that's the appeal of enclomiphene. So is it natty or not? So the natty plus pioneers, we find the typical model, the dichotomous model, natural versus not, as overly simplistic. It's reductive. We know that it's much more gray than that. And enclomiphene exemplifies why naturalness should not be conceptualized as a dichotomy. So think about it. What makes enclomiphene natural or not? So many people think, oh, enclomiphene, that's the drug that all the fake natties use and try, a, try to pass it off as natty. Well, I mean, why is it unnatural? So first of all, I'm not trying to defend it being natural or not. I'm just trying to showcase why the natural or not model is overly simplistic. So enclomiphene boosts your endogenous testosterone production. That's analogous to a testosterone boosting herb. So you can't say, oh, it's unnatural because it boosts your endogenous testosterone levels, right? And so most people say, oh, well, the reason why it's unnatural is because it's synthetic. But we have to remember creatine monohydrate, which is, of course, characterized as natural, is indeed synthetic. So creatine monohydrate is different than endogenous creatine or the creatine you find in a cow. Creatine monohydrate is objectively synthetic. It's produced in a lab via the chemical reaction of sarcosine and cyanamide. Creatine monohydrate didn't even exist before 1950. So you can't say because something is synthetic, it's not natural, okay? So is enclomiphene natural or not? It's up to you. I don't think that we should be attached to any of these labels. I don't think we should make emotional decisions based around some sort of identity marker. We should make rational decisions based on if this substance affects positively our holistic well-being. So my experience, I took 6.25 milligrams of enclomiphene for a few months which is a relatively low dose. The typical dose is 12.5 to 25 milligrams per day, but I took 6.25 to be extra safe, and it boosted my testosterone to 1,120 nanograms per deciliter, the highest it's ever been in my life. Now, remember, I discontinued all of the supplements to minimize the variables at play, and so it was just in clomiphene, although there might have been some lingering effects from blue and black ox testosterone boosters, but it was mostly just enclomiphene that boosted my testosterone that high. I had an incredibly positive experience. I didn't really notice any negative side effects. I noticed more energy levels, you know, the effects that you would normally notice from higher testosterone. Negative effects? No, not really. But what are some of the potential negative side effects? Well, the most common is mood side effects. So anytime you're modulating your estrogen composition or dynamic, of course, there's the potential for mood side effects. Uh, other side effects that are a little more severe, some people are worried about the eye floaters. You can have these eye floaters pop up and it can distort your vision a little bit. This is actually more common with clomiphene. So clomiphene is a combination of the enclomiphene and zooclomiphene isomer. The zooclomiphene isomer has a higher proclivity for side effects and it's less efficacious in boosting your testosterone and that's why taking just isolated enclomiphene is more beneficial if you're looking to boost your testosterone. So that's relatively rare. Also, a lot of people are worried about like having a stroke from an enclomiphene or blood clotting uh, because in the enclomiphene clinical trials, one out of 1,400 people, I believe, died from a stroke. And people are like, oh, well, that means that enclomiphene causes strokes. Well, actually, if you put this into perspective, one out of 1,400 people, I believe, is like 0.1% or something. And the average amount of people that die from stroke each year is like 0.2%. So people, there is a percentage of people that die from stroke regardless of what supplements they're taking. Does that make sense? So 
That, it's not indicative that that causes stroke in any way. But to be fair, anything that boosts testosterone does have the propensity to increase blood viscosity because it increases red blood cell production. So if you're super worried, if you have like a predisposition for blood clotting or something like that, you should be careful if you're using anything that boosts your testosterone. Okay, so why did I quit? So a few different reasons. So first of all, I want to take Blue and Black Ox testosterone booster, not just because it boosts your testosterone, but for a lot of other reasons. This, this has a nice panoply of, of vitamins and minerals that are, are super convenient to take. This has shilajit, which is very beneficial, that has fulvic acid, which has a lot of benefits. You know, Black Ox has like DIM and uh, different estrogen modulators that balance estrogen and whatnot. So I want to be taking these regardless of if I want my testosterone boosted. And I was actually slightly concerned that the combination of Black Ox, Blue Ox, and Enclomiphene, plus I've been doing semen retention more frequently while still engaging in sexual activity, I was just afraid my testosterone would, would be too high. I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder. I'm trying to optimize my holistic well-being. I don't need my testosterone through the roof. And I extrapolated that the combination of all these different compounds and, and protocols would probably boost my testosterone to at least like 1300. And I thought that that might be a little too high. So I thought, okay, and clomiphene isn't necessary. Let's just take blue ox and, and black ox. And then also I will be competing in golf soon and in clomiphene is a banned substance. So I thought, well, might as well just be off in clomiphene. But then I had a change of heart. Okay, so starting again, why did I decide to start in clomiphene again? So I saw this video about Brian Johnson, the longevity pioneer. And he took HGH and he had a negative experience. He developed insulin resistance. Of course, when you take HGH or MK677, anything that boosts growth hormone, if you don't take the necessary ancillary compounds or if you take too high of dosage, yeah, you're gonna develop insulin resistance. And he, because of that negative experience, just discontinued HGH completely. And I thought, Brian, what the fuck? Like, if you think, if you believe, you, you know, you listed all these studies where HGH was positive towards longevity, why wouldn't you just decrease the dosage and see if you had a more positive experience rather than discontinuing it completely? And then I was like, holy shit, I was just gonna do the same thing with enclomiphene. There are many benefits to enclomiphene that I, besides just boosting testosterone, that I would like to benefit from. For example, CIRMs, enclomiphene is a CIRM, have shown to be neuroprotective, beneficial for the brain. And so I thought, okay, if I'm worried about my testosterone being too high, why don't I just take a really low like microdose of enclomiphene? And so that's the plan. I, I plan on taking 3.5, three, sorry, 3 point, like what, 125? This is what I do, okay? So I split open the Swiss Chems enclomiphene capsule, by the way, Swiss Chems, code plus, SwissChems.is, that's where you can get enclomiphene, MK677, BPC157, uh, blue and black oxer from enhancedlabs.com, you can use code plus. So I actually empty the enclomiphene capsule into this little container and what? One pill is 12.5 milligrams, I believe. 12.5 milligrams. And so I'm just planning on taking like a fourth of this powder per day. And in fact, I might just take a fourth of the powder every other day. The point is I'm just taking a really low dosage of enclomiphene because why not? I can get some of the benefits and then I don't, I don't have to worry about my testosterone getting too high, but I might as well just take a little bit of enclomiphene. And then for golf, I figured, you know, this is one of the benefits of the Natty Plus protocol is that you can come off all of these compounds and you don't have to worry about withdrawal symptoms because you're not suppressing your natural testosterone production or any of your natural hormonal productions. And so you're not going to be addicted to any of these compounds. You can come off at any time and you just return to baseline or stay slightly above baseline. And clomiphene has a half-life of about 10 hours. So the detection time for drug tests or when the compound is completely eliminated from the system, that takes about six half-lives. So in 60 hours, it's completely out of your system. MK677 has an even shorter half-life and that's why I was continuing taking that. It's like MK67 and BPC157, the synergy there is just so beneficial for healing. I just decided I'm gonna stay on those until it's close to a golf tournament where I feel like I might be drug tested and I have to come off. And so I decided why not do the same thing with enclomiphene. A couple weeks before I believe I'm going to be drug tested, just come off. And so that's one of the appeals of the Netty Plus protocol. And so yeah, I think that really covers it. 
So right now I am, I'm taking blue and black ox testosterone booster, a, a dose of each, MK677, BPC157, and clomiphene, of course, slim pills as well, metformin to make sure I reduce the uh, propensity for insulin resistance, and of course, many other compounds as well, but let's say the compounds that are very advantageous for bodybuilding, which many of you, of course, that's why you're here watching this. We've got MK677 and clomiphene, blue and black ox testosterone booster, oh, and phytoturk. Phytoturk as well, and then of course a lot of different health and longevity supplements. But anyway, that's why I quit in clomiphene, but I'm hopping back on it at a microdose. Uh, code plus, swisschems.is if you want to snag some. And I believe that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.